All right, let's get a little more practice taking limits of composite functions. So here we want to figure out what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of g of h of x. And the function g, we see it defined graphically here on the left. And the function h, we see it defined graphically here on the right. Pause this video and have a go at this. All right, now your first temptation might be to say, all right, well, what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 of h of x? And if that limit exists, then input that into g. So if you take the limit as x approaches negative 1 of h of x, you see that you have a different limit as you approach from the right than when you approach from the left. So your temptation might be to give up at this point. But what we'll do in this video is to realize that this composite limit actually exists even though the limit as x approaches negative 1 of h of x does not exist. So how do we figure this out? Well, what we could do is take right-handed and left-handed limits. Let's first figure out what is the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right-hand side of g of g of h of x, h of x. Well, to think about that, what is the limit of h as x approaches negative 1 from the right-hand side? So as we approach negative 1 from the right-hand side, it looks like h is approaching negative 2. So another way to think about it is, this is going to be equal to the limit as h of x approaches negative 2. And what direction is it approaching negative 2 from? Well, it's approaching negative 2 from values larger than negative 2. h of x is decreasing down to negative 2 as x approaches negative 1 from the right. So it's approaching from values larger than negative 2 of g of h of x. g of h of x. I'm color coding it to be able to keep track of things. And so this is analogous to saying, what is the limit as if you think about it as x approaches negative 2 from the positive direction of g. Here, h is just the input into g. So the input into g is approaching negative 2 from above, from the right, I should say, from values larger than negative 2. And we can see that g is approaching 3. So this right over here is going to be equal to 3. Now let's take the limit as x approaches so now let's take the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left of g of h of x. So what we could do is first think about, well, what is h approaching as x approaches negative 1 from the left? So as x approaches negative 1 from the left, it looks like h is approaching negative 3. So we could say this is the limit as h of x is approaching negative 3. And it is approaching negative 3 from values greater than negative 3. It's going h of x is approaching negative 3 from above. Or we could say from values greater than negative 3. And then of g of h of x. So another way to think about it, what is the limit as the input to g approaches negative 3 from the right? So as we approach negative 3 from the right, g is right here at 3. And so this is going to be equal to 3 again. And so notice, the right-hand limit and the left-hand limit, in this case, are both equal to 3. And so when the right-hand and the left-hand limit is equal to the same thing, we know that the limit is equal to that thing. And this is a pretty cool example because the limit of, you could say, I guess the internal function right over here of h of x did not exist, but the limit of the composited function still exists.